one. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use XGBoost and we're going to do it in a very streamlined way. So all those things that would be common, like splitting data set into a training and test set or having a look at the correlation matrix, all those things would be uh, not done. So we'll just do the very basics. So having a data set, doing the bare minimum in order to use XGBoost. And then at the very end, we're going to have a look at the explanatory power behind XGBoost to as well see what we can get out of our model. So there are a couple of things that you need to do. So as well, we need to import libraries. And there are three libraries that you need to install. So the first one would be this pip install by dataset and this is where we'll get the data set that we will use next we can have pip install and then xgboost and then the last one would be to do conda and then install hyphen c and then conda hyphen forge and then finally shap so these are the three ones that you need to install in your prompt or anaconda prompt and then we actually need to import them so import shap import xgboost as xgb next one will be to import pandas as pd and then the last one from pi dataset we want to import data next we want to actually load the data set and let's just run our libraries first. So let's go F9. Here we go. And then to load the data set, we're going to call it data. And then we do equal. And then we use the function data inside. And then in quotes, we just do Titanic. So the data set that we will be using, it is the very famous Titanic data set. So it is whether which were the people that boarded the Titanic um, boat that survived or not so this is the key idea we are just going to have a look what are the characteristics of the people that survived this is one of the most famous data sets and and it's especially famous within the data science community so here we go so in the variable explore click on data and we have class age sex and whether someone survived or not so this is quite quite a simple data set but there are a couple of things here. So the first one is that everything here is more or less on a character based. And we do need to transform everything into dummy variables because XGBoost does not deal well with factors. Or in fact, it does not deal at all. So we need to transform everything in dummy variables. And that is exactly what we are going to do first. So transform categorical and then into dummy variables. And here we go. So the first thing is to actually correct this. So categorical. And then now what we need to do. So we'll still call it data here. And we go to our pandas. And there's this wonderful function, which is called get dummies, open parentheses. And there are two things here that we need to include. The first one is our data, so we call it data. And then the second bit that we need to do, we are going to do drop, and then underscore first, and then equals true. Now, what does this mean? So it basically means that for each of the variables that is going to be transformed, we are going to drop the first one. And this is so that we do not fall within the dummy variable trap. Now, next, what we want to do afterwards is to actually isolate the X and the Y variables. Now, I have just run this data command, so let's just have a look. So we have second class, third class, so the first class was omitted. And then we have age, whether people were child or not. And then we have the sex, so we have four women. And then as well, we also transform the survived into survived, yes. The next thing now that we're going to do, we are going to isolate the X and Y variables. And so very simple X, so X equals, and then we go to our data, we do dot I lock, open square brackets, let's do 
all the observations comma now we refer to our columns and if we have a look so we know that survived is our dependent variable and it's in a very last column so we need to take the initial four so we want all up until the last one so to do this we do just colon and then minus one what does this mean is that we are selecting all of them up until the last one and in python the indexes on the right they are excluded so this minus one so this means that the last column will not be included let's do f1 to run to see and here we go we have the x with the same amount of observations but only four columns and next we do the y so y equals and then data dot i lock open square brackets and then it's the same process all the observations with a colon and then we do a comma and now we want just the last one and how do we do this we just do the minus one remember minus one is to go to the very last column let's do f9 and have a look here we go just the 1316 observations let's click on y and here we go we have the survived underscore yes as the variable next xgboost is quite particular so there is one thing that we need to do is that we need to transform everything into an xgboost matrix so as a comment create xgboost matrix and don't worry this is actually quite simple let's call it matrix and then matrix equals we go to our xgb library so the xgboost we do dot and then the function is the matrix now what we need to include inside so there's just a couple of things that i would like us to include which is the x and the y variables that we have just included so x and then we do label so label to refer to the dependent variable label equals y let's do f9 here we go it has run we have the matrix which is a type core d matrix next we want to set the parameters and we're not going to do all of them so we're going to take the ones by default like learning rate the minimum child weight all of them will be the ones that are in default so this is really to so i really want to have it as streamlined as possible but there are a couple of parameters that i would like us to do let's call it params and then equals and then we need to open a dictionary with the curly brackets and then inside so the first one is random state so this is so that in the end i mean just in case because we really don't have a lot of observations i mean 1000 is a decent number but all in all I mean we can have very different results so this is so that when you do the sharp values we get more or less similar results random state 1502 this is the value that i usually pick and now there are two things that we need to include and this is just to refer that we are doing a classification slash logistic problem and the first thing is that we're going to state what is the evaluation parameter so we're going to go and do eval underscore metric and then we do again colon and then in quotation marks we do a you see area under the curve which is a performance metric for classification problems and then we need to state so objective and then in quotation marks we do binary and then colon again logistic because do remember that when it comes to classification problems you can have more than just this binary form so this is just to reinforce what we are doing let's select everything and then run so f9 here we go now next we are now actually ready to finally run xgboost so run xgboost now quite quite simple so we're going to call it model so we're going to store everything within this model object we're going to go again to our xgb library then do dot and then we do train and there are just three things that we definitely need to include and the first one is params so params is equal to params quite simple the next one is another one that we have created so d train equals matrix and then the last one is num boost round it just means how many times do we want our xgboost model to run remember that xgboost is something or is an algorithm that runs several different times 
and that the end output or the final model it's actually a combination of all the models that were created and that is what makes XGBoost an ensemble algorithm. Let's select everything and now run. Here you go, F9. Now, absolutely almost done with this. Now, we have done the XGBoost model. So, now, there are two things that we could do. The first one is to have a look at the accuracy, but I don't think it's so reliable, especially we are not doing this training and test set. And the second one is to have a look at the SHAP values. And I think this one is a bit more interesting because it really more points from a business perspective in what you should do. Now, quite, quite simple comments. So SHAP values. And here you go. First one is to create this function, which we'll call it explainer. And then we go to our function, which is SHAP. We do dot and we go to tree and then explainer. And here we go inside. So we just need to actually include model. And then the remaining, we actually don't need anything. So here we go, quite, quite simple. Next, what we want to do is that we are going to create the actual SHAP values. Now equals. And what we need to do, we need to use this function that we have just created explainer. And then we use SHAP values. And then what we need to include inside, we need to include the X. So why the X? So these are the predictors. And then the last bit, we go again to our SHAP library, we do dot, we do summary, and then underscore plot. And then inside, we include the SHAP values that we have just created. And then the rest is the X. So to summarize, so first we start off by creating a function, which we call the explainer, and this is based on the XGBoost model. And then next, we use this explainer function to create the SHAP values. And then the last one is that we actually plot the SHAP values. So all in all, the intuition and the way that it flows, I think it is quite, quite simple. Let's select everything and then run. Here we go. And then we should be able to see it in the plots. And what we need to have a look and understand. So the key idea is that red values are high and blue values are low. And everything that is here on the right, so this has a greater likelihood of survival and on the left, it has a lower likelihood. We interpret this, so women. So if they are women, so high value, so that means that they will be women. So they have a higher likelihood of survival. Now, when it comes to the third and the second class, they actually have a very much lower likelihood of survival. And then if they were children, they had a higher likelihood of survival. So to recap, in order to have a greater likelihood of survival, you would have to be a woman and in the first class. If you were also a child, you would also have a greater likelihood, especially, of course, if you are in the first class. I would also like to tell you that this is in a decreasing order of importance. So being a woman or actually, you know, the gender overall was the most important factor, according to XGBoost, for survival in the Titanic. This is it for this video. I hope that you found it interesting and that at least now you know how you can apply XGBoost. This was really the most streamlined way possible that I could find in order to use XGBoost on Udemy. I have a course on XGBoost in both Python and R, which is far more lengthy than this video because we really go end to end from the very beginning of having the data set to make all the transformations, all the hyperparameter tuning and to really have like a proper product or a proper model at the very end of it. So please be sure to check it out. It is a link in the description of this video. I am very much looking forward to seeing you in another video. So please be sure to subscribe to the channel. And until then, have fun.